Welcome, Minecraft fans, back to Scar World and our second part of our base tour. If you saw part one, then you know what this is all about. This is the road in from the Nether Hub to our base. Let's get this. Uh, let's look. Let's do it this way. First person. And uh, if you didn't see part one, then I suggest you check it out. I'll put a link up in the card and uh, click on that to see what we worked on for the ground level of our multi-level floating island base. Uh, the ground level, of course, just being an island, minus the floating. Anyway, it looks a little bit like this. It's an abandoned government lab. Just go check it out, I explain everything. But you can already see part two on the horizon, way up there. I, of course, it's our first floating island, and I want every different uh, part of this base to be a different build style. And so that's where this comes in. And we're going to get a beautiful sunset shot of it all. Look at that bamboo forest. A Japanese slash Korean inspired build here. Start off with one of these gateways, a very simple one, probably the smallest one that I've ever seen. Um, they look a lot better if they're bigger, but that's all right. And of course, we follow our little stream of water around to a nice building here. Um, we can go inside. There's a place to sleep. Um, I made them look like bed mats on the floor. Normally, you would take this uh, up during the day and store it in the wall somewhere or in the cupboard so that you wouldn't uh, have to walk all over it all day long. But hey, it's Minecraft and I needed a place to sleep. Um, but of course, we've got the, the, the mats over here and some weapons for sparring or... Um, well, not really for sparring. You know that sport where you jump around a lot with with cool weapons and it's like gymnastics, um, but it's a martial art. That's sort of what that's for. It's pretty cool. Um, but over here outside, we've got, let's see if it still works, a special shrine that if you, you know, give a little bit of uh, donation, you get some bamboo out of it. And yeah, I'd say it still works. Look at this, zero tick bamboo farm, very loud, um, under there, and look, you can go down this maintenance hatch to see it all happen. It's a nail mango design, pretty simple, yep, um, and it's hidden under here in the middle of the island where it won't cause any problems or look real ugly, uh, but that way, I can get bamboo whenever I need for scaffolding and sticks and uh, fuel. Yeah, it's pretty useful. On with the tour. In the second room, we've got two uh, sets of armor here, and this is definitely for sparring. Uh, look at that, the black and the red. Very cool. And in the third room, well, it's a place to eat. Got some nice yummy uh, seaweed here and some possibly tea. Yep, I think that looks like tea. Um, whoops, that's a wall. There we go, that's a door. Um, and of course, onwards, we go over the stream, this nice bridge, and we're here in the bamboo forest with a winding sandy path through here to, well, of course, it's going to be up to part three, the next level of our base. And it's going to have, you know, some other useful farms in it. Um, and it's going to be on a bigger floating island, and it's going to be a completely different build style from either this part or the first part. But really quickly, I wanted to comment on the, the foliage over here. I was going with a theme, sort of a minimal, uh, minimal, you know, biodiversity, because I think it would look better. So I went with uh, Lily of the Valley and ferns and bamboo. And I thought these three went together to make a, a cohesive sort of custom biome, I guess you could call it. And lanterns everywhere for light. Um, but I will not claim that this island is spawn proof. It probably is spawn spawn frequent. Well, anyway, that's all I did for part two, sort of a smaller part to this space because I spent all of my time making this. We're in the minigame hub. This is a minigame that I made, and it's a house. It's a nice, uh, you know, present day suburban house. Oh man, this was a challenge. It was fun too. It is even just a challenge of getting so much quartz. I mean, you gotta make white paint, it's difficult. But it's not just a house, it's also a minigame. It is 
the escape house. It's an escape room. And it's not too expensive either. I built this uh, to house an escape room challenge. It's multiple rooms. We got a nice uh, garage we, and it hides all the redstone. Look at that. Everything that's going on in there. We've got a nice fence and it hides all the redstone that's going on over there. We've got, uh, what, six or seven rooms and we've got an exciting challenge in here. Let me give you the tour. Push button to start. Locked in. Dear participant, now that you're locked in here, please make yourself useful by doing some of the chores around the house. That's right, look at this. We can't get out until we figure out the combination lock and the clues are, like I said, spread out throughout the house. We got a nice dining room in here with some interesting uh, napkins laid out and some birch chairs, which is really awesome. You know, you can, I can't put a, an arm here that would match the other ones. I suppose I could do a sign or something. But I really like this trick for when you've got chairs lined up. Use a fence gate to uh, make the arms. Um, some decorative bamboo around the outside and like a china cabinet. Look at that. We got some shelves up here. We got some nice wallpaper, I guess. Uh, let's check out the living room. In here, we've got a, a couch and it's lowered by one. So it was kind of difficult coming up with couch cushions. But I think this birch white wool design, I think it works. We got a coffee table, a little uh, desk, I guess, another coffee table, maybe, and a TV. It's off right now. Ah, we got a clock. Look at all this cool stuff. Look at this desk. Look at these. We got file cabinets over here. It even says what they are. A laptop, and that kind of works for a keyboard. Some people use chainmail um, helmets for keyboards, but I like this. I like that just as well. And look at this lamp, huh? Do you ever see such a cool base for a lamp before? I don't know. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, and look at this clock. Anyway, this place is just filled with clues, too. There's things all over here. Check out this kitchen. I love the endstone bricks for the floor, by the way. We've got aprons in the cupboard here, hanging on hooks. I like that one a lot. we got shelves with books, without books. we got cake and carrots. That's how you know it's a kitchen, for sure. And like I said, there's things all over the place. Look at this. Clues and uh, supplies. And let me just point out this beautiful sink here. Do you see this? Yeah, every picture of a sink in Minecraft that you see on, uh, on YouTube or on Reddit or something, it's full of water. I don't understand that. I don't know about you, but I don't leave my sink uh, filled all night long while I'm doing stuff and, and all day. I just, I just don't understand that. It's getting dark, so let's go check out the living room. Uh, over here, we got a nice archway, I think. Big paintings into the, um, well, look at this. Caution leak. Oh, there's the bathroom, but it's dangerous. I want to go in there. There's some kind of a leak. Maybe that needs to be fixed. Here we got a bedroom. Look at this. Three beds. We got bunk beds here. Let's see if we can use that. Oh, there are monsters nearby. Uh-oh, they better be outside, because I lit this whole place up. I will say, I spent an inordinate effort to light this entire house up, so there should be absolutely no spawnable places in this whole place. But even so, I'm going to get out my axe and make sure that's true. Yeah, I think that's probably true. Might, maybe it's in the roof somewhere where I, where I uh, don't have access. But let me show you the bedroom. Got a, what is this, a lever, of course. Maybe an ink pot with a pen and uh, a flower. We've got a wardrobe here, a chest full of toys. I already mentioned the bunk bed. And look at this beautiful wallpaper, rose wallpaper. Yeah, I like that a lot. Um, but it's more than just one bedroom. Here's another bedroom, different floor, different uh, furniture. This is kind of a desk with some books in it. That's pretty cool. More toys, of course. Different closet with some square suits hanging up. These are probably towels. We'll go with that. There's some kind of clothes. Um, throughout these rooms, I've used the old glowstone under the trapdoor for a light. It's all right. I like it better than a sea lantern. It seems warmer and more residential, but uh, the jury's still out on that one. Another beautiful painting. These people have strange taste in art, let me tell you. For instance, out here, I did the lantern surrounded by signs trick which is, uh, it's all right. 
it's a little fancy, and that's why it works in these hallways, but it wouldn't work in like your bedroom. I think it's too fancy. And then the last bedroom, just one bed this time, another wardrobe, and uh, a cactus, because everyone needs a cactus when they curl up and go to sleep. But let's look at the rest. Oh, what's this? Is this part of the wall? It certainly looks like it. No, actually, it's the access hatch to the, the attic. Let's go up and look. Oh, I can't go up there. Maybe I'll be able to fix that ladder. Like I said, many challenges to complete throughout this. I almost forgot the best part of the living room is this fan. Let's see if I can get a good picture of that. There we go. That is thumbnail material. Look at that beautiful ceiling fan. Uh, not for small living rooms, let me tell you that. Anyway, we've seen most of the uh, places in this house, but uh, the last room is the, the garden, the yard, I guess. And the best part is right behind me. Are you ready for this? <sighs> That's right. This is the coolest grill I have ever seen. And look, we've got some buns, maybe like a burger, or that kind of looks like a salmon slab or something there. And then maybe a burger over there. We got uh, doors. This thing is just decked out. Let me tell you. Oh, those don't fold the right way. So uh, hopefully it doesn't rain because we don't got any cover. But uh, let me show you the rest of it. Kind of a nice little decorative garden here and a doghouse. You don't have to tell me if it works. It's kind of a doghouse. It kind of isn't. That's all right. I'm not bothered by it. But yeah, like I said, this whole place is an escape room challenge. And when you get all the puzzle pieces and fit them together, you get the combination to get right back out. And, uh, and for that, some people are willing to pay. Uh, even in real life, people pay money to get locked into a place and, uh, and puzzled to get back out. And that's just good fun. Well, I hope a lot of people on this server enjoy my little escape house, but I'm not going to give away any of the uh, hints on how to do it in this video. So if you are on the server, you'll just have to give it a try and uh, see what it's all about. Uh, anyway, that's all I got for this episode of Scar World. It's uh, part two and part three is coming up. Let me know in the comments what you, what kind of build style we should do for our next uh, floating island and base extension. And uh, if you have any ideas for more mini games, whoa. I think I just murdered some grass. Alright, thanks for watching.